Have you ever wondered why the coastlines of continents look like they could fit together like pieces of a puzzle? Welcome to Evolution, where we unravel mysteries in deep thinking. Have you ever looked at a world map and noticed how the coastlines of some continents seem to fit together, almost like pieces of a giant puzzle? This observation is at the heart of one of the most groundbreaking scientific theories, continental drift. The theory of continental drift was first proposed by Alfred Wegener in the early 20th century. Wegener suggested that the continents were once part of a supercontinent called Pangaea, which existed around 335 million years ago. Over time, Pangaea began to break apart, and its pieces drifted to their current positions. According to Wegener, Pangaea began to break apart about 175 million years ago during the Jurassic period. The pieces of this supercontinent drifted to their current positions over millions of years. Wegener's idea was revolutionary because it challenged the prevailing belief that continents were fixed and immovable. Despite the compelling evidence, Wegener's theory faced significant opposition. The main challenge was that Wegener couldn't explain the mechanism driving the movement of continents. His ideas were not widely accepted during his lifetime. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that Wegener's ideas were vindicated. Advances in the study of the ocean floor and the development of the theory of plate tectonics provided the missing piece of the puzzle. Scientists discovered that the Earth's lithosphere is divided into tectonic plates that float on the semi-fluid asthenosphere beneath them. The movement of these plates is driven by forces such as mantle convection, slab pull, and ridge push. The theory of plate tectonics explains how continents drift. As these plates move, they carry continents with them. This movement can cause plates to collide, pull apart, or slide past each other, leading to geological phenomena like earthquakes, volcanic activity, and the formation of mountain ranges. The most famous example of this puzzle-like fit is the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa. These coastlines appear to match perfectly, suggesting they were once joined. This wasn't just a coincidence. Geological and fossil evidence supports this connection. Similar rock formations and ancient fossils have been found on both continents. If you look closely at the coastlines, you'll see that the bulge of eastern South America nestles neatly into the concave curve of Western Africa. This observation was one of the key inspirations for Alfred Wegener's theory. But the fit is more than just visual, it's backed by substantial geological and fossil evidence. Geologists have discovered that the rock formations along the coasts of these continents are strikingly similar. For example, the ancient rock strata of the Snow Francisco Craton in Brazil matched the rock formations found in the West African Craton. These matching geological features suggest that the rocks were formed at the same time and place, reinforcing the idea that these landmasses were once connected. But the story doesn't end there. Take Australia and Antarctica. These continents were once neighbors in the supercontinent Gondwana. Even today, their continental shelves fit together like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. The geological similarities between the two continents provide further evidence of their ancient connection. If we look at the continental shelves of Australia and Antarctica, we can see a remarkable fit, almost like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. This fit suggests that these continents were once connected, forming part of the southern section of Gondwana. Another interesting fit is Greenland and North America. Before the opening of the North Atlantic Ocean, Greenland was connected to North America. Their coastlines and geological features suggest a shared history. Fossil evidence also supports the connection between Greenland and North America. Fossils of ancient plants and animals found in rocks of similar ages on both land masses suggest that they were once part of the same terrestrial environment. Paleoclimatic evidence adds another layer to the story. Glacial deposits from past ice ages have been found in both Greenland and North America, indicating that these regions were once situated near the Arctic Circle and experienced similar cold climates. 
We also see evidence of continental drift in mountain ranges. The Appalachian Mountains in North America are geologically related to the Caledonian Mountains in Scotland and Scandinavia. These mountains were formed during the collision of ancient landmasses, further illustrating how continents have moved and reshaped over millions of years. Around 480 million years ago, during the Ordovician and Silurian periods, the Caledonian Mountains began to form as the ancient continents Laurentia, Baltica and Avalonia collided and merged. Similarly, the Appalachian Mountains began to take shape around 480 million years ago, during the same geological period. These mountains formed as a result of the collision and convergence of several ancient landmasses, including Laurentia and Gondwana, which eventually became North America. Now, let's journey to the Indian Ocean, where we find another compelling example of continental drift the connection between India and Madagascar. Despite their current separation by the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean, these landmasses share a fascinating geological history that provides insight into the movements of ancient continents. Around 90 million years ago, during the Cretaceous period, India began to separate from Gondwana and embarked on a northward journey. This movement eventually led to the collision between India and the Eurasian Plate, resulting in the formation of the Himalayas. Now, let's explore a fascinating geological connection between South America and the Caribbean Plate. While these regions are now separated by the Caribbean Sea, their geological history tells a tale of a time when they were part of a larger landmass. This connection sheds light on the dynamic forces that shape our planet. Fossil evidence further supports the connection between South America and the Caribbean Plate. Fossils of ancient marine organisms found in rocks of similar ages on both landmasses suggest that these regions were once part of the same marine environment. For example, fossils of ancient corals, mollusks, and other marine creatures have been found in limestone formations in both South America and the Caribbean. Iceland sits on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where the Eurasian and North American plates are pulling apart. This region is a vivid illustration of active continental drift. Iceland, situated directly atop the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, offers a rare glimpse into the inner workings of our planet. The island's dramatic landscapes, characterized by volcanoes, geysers, and rugged terrain, are a testament to the ongoing tectonic activity beneath the Earth's surface. The volcanic activity in Iceland is directly linked to the movement of tectonic plates along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge as the North American Plate and the Eurasian Plate drift apart. Magma from the mantle rises to fill the gap, creating new oceanic crust and volcanic islands like Iceland. Now, let's take a look at an unexpected and intriguing observation. The apparent fit between the east coast of the USA and the west coast of Australia. While these regions are not typically discussed together in the context of continental drift, their coastlines exhibit a surprising degree of similarity. At first glance, you might not see the connection. However, if you examine the shape of the eastern seaboard of the United States and the western coastline of Australia, you can notice a remarkable alignment. The curvature and contour of these coastlines seem to complement each other, almost as if they were once connected. While this fit might not suggest a direct connection in the same way as other continental fits, it sparks curiosity about the complex history of continental movements. The Earth's surface has been in constant motion for billions of years, with landmasses repeatedly joining and breaking apart in ways that are not always straightforward. This surprising fit raises interesting questions about the configurations of ancient supercontinents before Pangaea, such as Rodinia or Columbia. Could it be that these coastlines hint at an even older connection, lost to deep geological time? Today, we understand that the Earth's surface is divided into tectonic plates. These plates are constantly moving, driven by forces deep within the Earth. The movement of these plates causes continents to drift, collide, and reshape, 
continuously altering the face of our planet. Check out our other video on the matter while we go on a timeline history journey on the Earth's continents. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time and space. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to Evolution for more fascinating explorations of our world. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring.